Hi, this is Vivek and today we are going to learn about Amazon CloudFront cache policies, what they are, how to use that and how to optimize your CloudFront configuration to use CloudFront cache policies. So on 22nd of July, CloudFront launched their cache policies. Before we go further to understand what cache policy is and what it does, let's understand how caching works. So let's talk about a concept called cache key. Now cache key is a unique string or unique identifier assigned to each and every object which is delivered from a CDN. For in this case, it is CloudFront. Now when you're delivering the content from CloudFront, each and every object should have a unique cache key so that it should not get mixed with the, any other customer's cached content or get the content which is getting delivered from CloudFront. Now this cache key contains usually the host name, and the URL path. You can also include query string parameter, header, and cookies, so that even though the URL remains the same, you can vary the cache or you can have different content in the cache with same URL, but different permutation and combination of cookies, headers, and query string parameter. To give this flexibility to the users, CloudFront launched this policy. Now this is not new. CloudFront already had something called whitelisting headers, whitelisting cookies, whitelisting query string parameters. Uh, but the problem was that it was tightly coupled with what you want to send to the origin. So anything you want to forward to the origin, you have to whitelist in the CloudFront distribution. Now though this works, but it reduces the cache it ratio. For example, if a customer wants to send user agent string from end user to the origin server, it has to whitelist user agent string. Now, every time a user agent string has different values coming from different end user, it will create a different cache replica in the cache of CloudFront server. Now, this increases the number of different varieties of same object, but different user agent string at part of cache key. And hence, the cache hit ratio goes down and thus the end user's performance is suboptimal. Now with this feature uh, of cache policies, CloudFront has segregated what you want to include in cache key and what you want to forward to the origin. Now this has also been documented well in the official document of CloudFront. You can go to CloudFront developer guide and here is the section called working with policies. You will understand by reading this concept also in the documentation. Let's try and create a policy ourselves. This is the new tab which came here in the screen. So let's create a dummy distribution first. I'll give you a dummy names. This is myserver.com. And we'll leave everything as it is uh, because this, this is just a dummy configuration we are creating here. What difference you see here is, here is the new button that came. Use a cache policy and origin request policy. The previous policy was this one where you just define the TTLs and you can whitelist cookies, headers, and query string parameters here. But now you can actually define what policy. Now there are separate cache policies for caching and for origin request. There are a couple of managed cache policies available. One, two, three, four. These are four managed cache policies available as of now. There are some managed policy available for origins as well. You can create a new policy here uh, by clicking this button, create a new policy or you can go back to the previous screen and go to the policies section and create policies from scratch. I'll just use this button with agent, which essentially opens a new tab. And here is the place where you define your cache policies. So I'll just write first policy and then you define the TTL, what minimum value you want, what maximum value you want, what default value you want. What minimum, maximum and default does, uh, we can discuss this later in one of the tutorials where I will be talking about entire CloudFront distribution in detail. But as of now, we'll just put a dummy value of zero, one year and one day. Now here is a place where you can define what headers you want to include in the cache key. Now you can select none or you can whitelist some of the headers. Same way you can go to the whitelist and you can select the headers. With this release, CloudFront not only released cache policies, but it also exposed some of the inbuilt headers, which tells you from which region the request is coming from, geo information headers. 
now these headers has granular information as city postal code time zone depending upon your choice you can whitelist these headers if you want let's see for example i'll just want to the city information so i'll just add header here same goes for cookie you can actually whitelist all none or you can actually blacklist certain cookies example if i don't want session id cookie so i'll, I'll enter session id just add cookie so all the cookies will be part of cache key but session id will not be same goes for query string parameter you can select all none whitelist and there's a new option that is all except for example you don't want fbcl id as part of cache key so you can blacklist now there, whether you want to cache compressed objects or not you can select here this is new now click on create policy here we created the first policy for cache the same i could have done by clicking this button here create new policy so i'll go to the first origin policy that's the name leave the command now what headers you want to forward whether you want to forward none you want to forward whitelisted headers you want to forward all the headers which started cloudfront that is inbuilt headers that we saw in the previous screen all all the viewers headers you want to forward you can select all the viewer headers just you have to be sure that you really want to do this because when you are doing this even the incoming host header will be forwarded to the origin now, second option is for cookies you want to forward all the cookies to the origin you can select this you can forward all the query string parameters to the origin and then create origin request policy in this screen we saw that there were four cache policies were available now you can see after clicking this refresh the newly created policy is now appearing in the drop down same goes for this we select this first origin policy so that's it we'll go down we'll click on create distribution and it will create a distribution and it will go live in another one to five minutes of time thanks for watching this guys hope this was useful please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss the next updates from me in the next tutorial we are going to talk about how we can create different cloudfront distributions for different kind of use cases